Yo guys, I'm Nick from Produce School and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a track like Stefan Botzen. Stefan Botzen is known for his infamous Moog subsequent bassline and we're going to recreate that today as well. Before we dive into the video, here's a little preview of the track. So let's start with the first and the main element of the track and that's the bass line. I made the bass line in the MOOC subsequent and I sent the MIDI from FL Studio to the MOOC subsequent. And I will now take you guys to the MOOC to go over the sound. So first of all I turn on oscillator 1 and I open up the filter. You directly hear the warm sound the MOOC already has. The wavetable is set between the square and the saw right here. Then I add this second oscillator. I put this oscillator an octave higher and I did it right here. The wavetable for this one is a saw. I also have a sub oscillator for some more body. This really helps because this will be the main base of our track. I also add some noise to the sound and then together you already get that fat sounding bass sound. The envelopes are pretty standard, you just need to make sure that the bass line is constantly playing. You can choose your own slope for the filter, in this case I'm going with the 18 dB slope. Mod 1 is linked to the filter to create some movement. And that's basically it. One thing that I forgot during the recording is the glide on the sound. You can add a little bit of glide and you can apply it to only oscillator 1. It's a really unique feature from the MOOC so don't forget to check that out as well. Okay, so that's it for the sound design of the bass. Let's now move on to the effects that we applied in FL Studio. First of all, I added a Camel Crusher with the British Clean preset and the mix turned down a little bit, just to add a little bit more distortion to the sound. And then we added a delay and a reverb. And that's a really important step to make this bass sound really big. These things combined with the powerful sound of the Moog make up for a really cool bass line. As you can see I rendered the bass line and I did this because I wanted to play manually with the cutoff. And then it's easier to just automate it. You can hear it for example in this part where the cutoff fully opens up and that sounds like this. When the cutoff opens up you also really hear the delay and the reverb so that's doing its job as well. Let's now move on to the next synth which is the Noisy Arp. The Noisy Arp is made in Serum and it sounds like this. The main part that makes this sound cool is the FX because if I turn it off it sounds like this. When I turn it on it makes a huge difference. But first I will show you guys the sound in Serum. So as you can see the sound is really easy, it's a default wavetable linked to an MGLO12 filter and we link the envelope 1 to the filter as well. 
Envelope 1 is shaped pretty short and we added a noise, a Juno noise to get that analog feel to it. Make sure to put the noise on direct out because we want to put the filter only on the saw wave right here. In Serum there are no FX because I wanted to do it in the post-processing part. First of all there is an EQ that gets rid of the low end and it gets rid of some of the highest frequencies as well to push it a bit to the back in the mix. And we also boosted some high mids. Then there is a delay which is on 2 seconds and we selected ping pong and we added a low pass filter to the sound as well. Short delays on these kind of arps just work really well and we also added a tiny Valhalla vintage verb with a little bit of mix and a very short decay. Then I added a fruity panomatic which is automating the panning of the sound. Uh, the amount is set to 50% and the speed is set to 80%. It's something I heard in his tracks, uh, the arps moving from the left to the right. And this is an easy way to make it sound like that. I also added a stereo enhancer to make the sound wider. And a crystallizer which is a granular delay kind of plugin. And I just used the default preset um, with a little bit of mix to it. Then you already have your sound. Let's move on to the next synth and that's a noisy synth which is pushed to the back a little bit and that sounds like this. The sound is pretty similar to the plug but we didn't change envelope 1 and we don't use a filter for this. We only added some release to envelope 1. And then I added an LFO on the 1 second rate to the MGLO 6 filter just to create some weird movement in the sound. As always there's an EQ cutting out the low end and then the most important part for this sound as well is the delay and the reverb. I put quite some reverb on it as you can see here the wet level is on 80% and the decay is quite long as well. And then there is a 2 second delay set to ping pong mode with a bandpass filter on it as well. That's it for the synths in the track. The synths in the break part of the track and the drop are actually the same synths but just with different filter automations and that kind of stuff. So I now move into the drums of the drop. The drums sound like this. It's a really simple drum pattern and I will now show you all the elements. So first of all there's this kick which is from the Astro pack which is a melodic techno and house pack we just released on our website produceschool.com. If you want to check that out go to the link in the description and you will find all kind of cool sounds in it as well as presets, projects and much more. Then there is a snare and a clap layer together on top of it. and an open head and then last but not least we added some hi-hat loops like this they really get the groove going in the drop uh, I made my own as well right here and that sounds like this a cool trick I use is I go to tools randomize then I use this tool right here to randomize the panning and the velocity of the sound. I already did that and as you can see right here, it really randomized the pattern of the panning and that gives a bit of a natural touch to the loop as well. That's it for the drums, let's move on to the FX. So for the FX it's simple as well. In the drop we just added an impact which is a white noise based impact from Astral. And on top of that we added some ambient sounds. If you use these kind of ambient sounds in your drop make sure you put sidechain on it as well. Um, so it doesn't interfere your mix that much. For the FX in the break and the build up we also used white noise based impacts like this. And an uplifter right here. And here we use it once again. And then the drop hits right here. Just before the drop starts I added a high pass filter to the bass. Uh, in that way you can create, in that way you remove the low end just before the drop. And then the drop will hit much harder because then the low end will be brought back in. As you can see there are three sidechain automations which could have been put into one. But that's just laziness I guess. Um, and then in the drop there is an automation of the filter cutoff and the envelope 1 decay of the ARP 
and that just slowly changes in the drop to create some movement and some variety in the drop. The good part of this style is that the synths are so cool and so fat already that you don't really need much else underneath it. Of course it's not possible for everyone to have a MOOC subsequent at home so I will be looking into a Serum tutorial for this kind of sounds as well as it's also doable in VSTs nowadays um, but, but for us it was just nice to use the MOOC in a video once. I will now show you guys the end result once again. That's it for this video, as I mentioned most of the sounds are from the Astral pack which is a melodic techno and house pack and you can find the link for that in the description if you want to check out more previews of it. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, leave a like and subscribe and I hope to see you guys in the next video.